you take a cool sip of yellow-green liquid from a large champagne glass that's only a fraction filled as you sit, cross-legged, on the floor in silence. It was only a small sample, but the fluid's savory flavor fully floods your thoughts. Seaweed. Artichoke flesh. You focus on deciphering the experience while the tea's earthy, vegetal scent evokes memories of being close to the ground amongst cut plants and dirt as a child helping to pull the weeds. You immediately wipe this from your mind, of course, and begin the interrogation of your host. Uh, yes, very nice, but what's the message here? Didacticism is the black paint of approaches to art. It doesn't take much of it to totally dominate the mix of someone's creative philosophy. People find out about fables. They encounter allegory. They learn that there are ways a piece can convey a lesson or message, and they learn all the ways that's typically done. Suddenly, everything is Sudoku, something to be solved with their toolkit of trope knowledge, and then judged on the righteousness of its moral. You know what they say, when all you have is a tacky plastic decoder ring, everything looks like a secret message on the back of a sugary cereal box telling you to brush your teeth. I was recently dumbstruck by an exchange I observed on Twitter. If the story is told well enough, even if people don't agree with what's being said, they can at least enjoy the story. What does that mean? Basically, you can disagree with the message being said in a story, but still enjoy the story for what it is. What is it that you then like about the story? If it's not the messages given, then what? Stories, of course, being simply a cryptic way of telling you that X or Y thing is good or bad. Years ago, a visually striking trailer for a game called The Last Night dropped. I don't know if it's still being worked on. There was some controversy around one of his creators, Tim Sorrett, and things he'd written on social media that distracted discussion away from the creation itself. But I remember looking into the setting. I may be misremembering, but my recollection is that the world featured AI-perfected entertainment the cybernetically enhanced people who live there can interface with and enjoy. The main character, however, cannot be part of this augmented society due to a childhood accident. He's unable to connect with high-tech art and everything else due to a physical abnormality. A scary speculative concept from every imaginable angle. Though I'm not sure quite how hypothetical it is, I believe vast numbers of people today are living this protagonist's story insofar as art is concerned. Instead of physical damage stopping them from interfacing with a machine, they have been mentally crippled, emotionally stunted, and quarantined from their own humanity. Ideology has cauterized any receptor they may once have had for anything other than message or moral. Chunks of their personhood have been excavated like cancerous tumors in the name of maturity self-development, and progress. Vulnerability is espoused as a virtue now, not so you can experience new things and grow, but so that you'll be willing to present parts of yourself to the mob, who will then decide whether to cut off or excise them. Openness is encouraged only as part of submitting yourself to total spiritual mutilation. Ready for molding into an acceptable form. All that's ever left after internalizing modern discourse, being a machine that looks at the right things and comes to the right conclusions about them. Only looking out of their artificial shell through a narrow slit, allowed only to experience the thinnest slice of how art and life can be experienced. Calling it the true and correct interpretation. Afraid to be wrong. Afraid to feel wrong. Afraid to be disapproved of. Terrified of being condemned by a movie, a comic book, a game, a song, 
cowardice called media literacy. So no one will ever have to feel anything other than a validation-triggered dopamine rush. And all the while, wanting to inflict this small-souled, heartless existence on others. Tech, like AI, isn't going to remove humanity from art. It can't. So long as there's humanity in the observer, there's humanity in the art. But we can remove it. We're doing it to ourselves right now. And we'll call it a logically correct, media literate, moral good. Once art is dead. What a waste. But, as usual, that's just another one of my harmful opinions. <laughs>